So something, something that you may have noticed so far Well, I'll wait. So today we're going to learn anti-differentiation. Anti you know what, let's, we're, good. we're gonna learn a method called integration by parts. Our objective today Okay, now, so let's consider consider the derivative. of let's say, or let's say the derivatives of f of x equals, let's say x cubed plus two x minus, let's say plus two x squared plus three. All right, so what's the first derivative? Three x squared plus three Four uh, x plus four x plus four x and zero. Zero. Okay. What's the second derivative? Six x plus four. What's the third derivative? Six. What's the fourth derivative? numerals here. Zero. Okay. And what's the fifth derivative? Zero. And so on, right? Yeah. So now this is a property of polynomials specifically. But there are other derivatives that do that have similar behavior, or they get simpler over time. Notice that the function gets simpler as you as you find its derivative more and more. Now, this is in contrast to integrals, which generally get more complicated as you go. If you take the first integral, second integral, third integral, those generally get more complicated. Derivatives generally get less complicated. This isn't always true, but it is often true. Now, We can take advantage of this property to find integrals we 
couldn't before. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Um, okay. I need a little more time. All right, let me know when you're ready. I need time to find more whiteboards anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm All right, great. So before we, I just show you the integration by parts formula, let's try to, let's understand where the integration by parts formula comes from. Now, you might recall that, you might recall that the last method we used, U substitution, comes from, uh, is, we get there by do, running the chain rule back. Well, this next formula is what we get when we run the product rule backwards. Consider the product. which says that the derivative with respect to x of function u times function v is equal to u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Yeah, fair enough. Now, if we integrate both sides with respect to x, then we would be taking, if we integrate both sides with respect to x, then on the left side we would have the integral. Ugh. Of d dx u times v with respect to x. Hmm. equals the integral of the right side u dv dx plus v dv du. Now, the properties of integrals, we can rewrite this as two integrals. Yeah. Integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals on the basic. Now, we can do a little bit of creative rewriting. Now, 
notice that this dx actually cancels with this dx. So now we have the integral of u dv. plus the integral of v dx. No, it's du. No, no, yeah, that's du. This is du. Right. So the integral of u dv is going to be, oh, okay. Now on the left side, this, we're finding the integral of the, on this side we're finding the integral of the derivative. Right, but integrals and derivatives, the integral of a derivative is whatever we started with. Integrals and derivatives are inverse processes. So this whole side here just becomes uv. And on the right side, we now have, and on the right side, stuff cancels, and so we have integral of u dv plus integral of uv. All right. Now, If we subtract the integral of u dv from both sides, oh wait, sorry. Subtracting the integral of u dv. I mean, you could do it the other way. If we do that, then we end up with one side is the integral of u dv. And it is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Now this formula turns out to be very useful. It has the special name, the integration by parts formula. And it is very handy. Now, what this says is that if we're taking the integral of some function u times something, then we can find the antiderivative of, of so this is, what's the best way to describe it? Okay, so this is used when we're taking the integral of a product, some function times some other function with a dx in there somewhere. Now, I can find the derivative of u, defined d, and I can find the integral of dv, or the antiderivative, defined v, and I can plug them in, and so I can rewrite it as a new formula using a new integral that may be easier for us to solve. So, Okay. Now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away?
Hey, Larue. Yes, sir. My phone's about to die, so I might um, I might just leave. <laughs> All right. If your phone dies, your phone dies. Thank you for attending in the in the manner that you can. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and use the integration by parts form. Now today we're only just introducing this thing. We're going to look at it in more detail tomorrow. Short classes in the last day of the week. My whiteboard. Where's my? Where's my? Where's it? Okay. So, let's look at an example. Let's say we need to find the derivative of 3x minus 4 times sine Now, let's integrate. Let's integrate by parts. Now, I know that usually I tell you, this, or I tell you the strategy, and then we go through with the example. But for this one, I'm just going to work through the example, and. We'll just work through the example and then you'll see and I'll explain the strategy afterwards. So, the integration by parts formula says that the integral of u dv can be rewritten as uv minus the integral of v du. So, what I need to do is I need to decide one of these to designate my u and the other one to designate my v. Now, I'm going to choose the u to be this direction. And the rest, I'm going to designate my dv. Now, why did I, so why did I choose those? You'll see. Now, in order to use this formula, well, I know what the u and the dv is, but I need to find v and du. So, you remember how when doing u substitution? Now, when doing u substitutions, you found du dx, then isolated dx and plugged it in. We're going to do essentially the same thing. We know that u is 3x minus 4. So we'll take the derivative to find du dx. This means that du dx is 3. Now, this formula doesn't want dx, though. It doesn't want du dx, it wants du specifically. So I'll multiply both sides by dx to get du equals 3. Make sense? Now, this formula also needs v. Now, I don't know v, but I know that dv is sine of x dx. Now I want to find v. Now how are we going to do that? Well, you know how you take the derivative of u to find v u dx. Or you ultimately took the, take the derivative of u to find v u dx and then du. Well, we're going to work that process backwards. If dv equals sine of x dx, then that means that dv dx is sine of x. Now, to find v, we'll find the antiderivative.
So what's the antiderivative of sine? Anyone remember? Cosine? It's not, you're close. It's not cosine, it's negative cosine. The derivative, yeah. of, the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, the negative cosine back to sine. So we're backwards in the antiderivative of sine, negative cosine. Rewrite this as v equals negative cosine. So v is then negative cosine of x. Fair enough? Yep. Well, hey, I know u, I know du, I know dv, I know v. I can plug these things into this formula. So this whole integral then can be rewritten as uv. Our u here is 3x minus 4 times v is a negative cosine of x. And we're subtracting the integral of v, which is negative cosine, du, which is 3dx. Now, this integral, I don't know how to handle. But this integral is easy. I can, so first of all, I can bring out that minus sign. I can bring out that three. And now we have three X minus four, or let's see a little bit of simplification here. Anything, I'll move that negative sign in front. Plus the integral, or plus three integral cosine dx. Now, what is the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. Mm -hmm. So, our final answer then is negative 3x minus 4 times cosine of x plus 3 sine of x plus. So, I rewrote, so I was, by using, by using the integration by parts formula, I was able to rewrite an integral that I have no idea how to handle into an integral that I can handle. And then I handle it. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. Now, something that you that you might be wondering, something that I hope you're wondering is, okay, why did he choose this to be his u? Why did he choose this to be his dv? It's easy for him to say to just say that's his u, that's his dv. He uh, he has the book. He knows how. To do it. That tells him how to do it. Well, how? Why do we make the u? Why is this the u? Well, remember what I said earlier about how there are functions where if you take the derivative, it gets simpler. Now, what we did is we rewrote it so that the inside of the integral now is using the derivative of this part here. Meaning that we took, instead of having to take the integral of this horribly complicated thing, we're taking the integral of the antiderivative of this, which ends up not being too much more complicated, and the derivative of this, which is simpler. So, a strategy note. Notes on strategy. So this method is useful when u is a function functal? Even was I writing? Is a function 
that gets simpler. as you take the derivative. So this works best when u is, you know, a polynomial, something that gets simpler each time you take the derivative. Now, what about the dv? Now the dv, because you're, you, you, because uh, you have to, the formula uses, uh, you know, the antiderivative of, of dv. That means that the dv you choose dv needs to have something whose antiderivative is fairly simple, something that you can take the derivative of. The antiderivative of sine is cosine, for example. But this, falls, but this method falls apart if your dv is something that gets even worse when you find its antiderivative. Now, we'll look, at, we'll look at more examples of this tomorrow, but one thing that's cool is that when you're once you rewrite it using integration by parts, you end up with another product, which means that you can use the integration by parts formula again. So kind of like how the chain rule can be re done recursively, where you apply the rule multiple times. You can use integration by parts and apply that multiple times. to continually rewrite until you end up with something that you can find the integration. Now we're out of time, so I can't show you what that looks like right now, but I can, will show you tomorrow. So today we learned about this method for taking integrals called integration by parts. With integration by parts, you take an integral of a product and rewrite it in such a way that you end up with an integral that's easier to handle. It uses the formula integral of u dv equals u b minus integral of v d. Now, anyway, uh, remember to get that, remember to get those waivers turned in if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Later, Lou. Have a good rest of your day.